Nostalgia is a powerful motivator when trying to sell products. People often gravitate towards the familiar, the comforting, and the games industry is no exception. And of course, publishers seek to capitalize on this, utilizing existing franchises or creating spiritual successes. Sometimes they turn out brilliantly, like the recent Spyro and Crash Bandicoot remakes, but they don't always succeed. Mobile gaming is a key offender in manipulating your nostalgia as well, and many existing franchises have seen new entries here where gameplay deviates significantly from the main games and free-to-play or freemium mechanics are prioritized. Crowdfunding has also contributed to this as well, allowing a nostalgic public to pledge money towards the development of spiritual successes, but these campaigns have gained a reputation for overpromising and underachieving. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video games that try to exploit nostalgia and failed. Number 10, Star Wars Battlefront 2015. If you ask any Star Wars fan what their favorite video game adaptation is, chances are that 2005's Battlefront 2 will be mentioned. Bringing in a narrative-based campaign, the ability to use Jedi and Sith characters, and new game modes, it was well-received and became a multiplayer favorite. After the next installment was canceled though, fans cried out for a third game, but nobody answered their prayers. So when EA announced plans to reboot the franchise in 2013 with Battlefield developers DICE, you can bet that the initial anticipation was through the roof. Sadly, it soon became apparent that this would be primarily a multiplayer experience, featuring only a a few single player missions and no dedicated campaign. Still, no big deal, right? I mean, Battlefront was always best when it was anarchic multiplayer anyway, yeah? Well, releasing in 2015, EA's reboot lacked depth, was sparse on launch content, and critics took aim at the planned DLC being stuck behind a season pass. It was also seen to be aiming at casual audiences, a fact EA later admitted to. It's been completely overtaken now by EA's Battlefront 2, which released in 2017 and actually launched to a worse reception, but then turned itself around. So unless you have a PlayStation VR headset and want to dive into the Rogue One mission, which I absolutely recommend by the way, there's little point in going back to this disappointing reboot. Number 9, Mighty Number no. 9. Mighty No. 9 wasn't the first game to fail in delivering its Kickstarter promises, but it's certainly the biggest example. Developed by Mega Man creator Kiji Inafuni under his studio concept, it was announced back in 2013 as a spiritual successor to Mega Man, which had become a shell of its former self. Using a 2.5D visual style and asking for donations via Kickstarter, it was an appealing concept at the time, boosted by Capcom's neglect of the Blue Bomber and reached $4 million in funding. Big multimedia plans were made and numerous stretch goals were funded for additional platforms as well. But as development went on, it became apparent that Comcept were not equipped to the task at hand, suffering through various delays and accusations of mismanagement. This wasn't helped by the company attempting to launch a second Kickstarter project while Mighty No. 9 was still in development either. Those cheeky so-and-sos. It slowly unraveled into a PR disaster and eventually released in June 2016 to highly negative reviews, failing to deliver on a large number of campaign promises such as a 3DS and Vita version. It's just as well then that Capcom released Mega Man 11 two years later. Also utilizing a 2.5D art style, it released to much better critical reception and has made Mighty No. 9 completely redundant in the process. Number 8. Ukulele. Banjo-Kazooie might be one of the N64's most fondly remembered adventures, but it's a series that has been left in the cold in recent years. Despite a recent reappearance in Super Smash Bros., it's not seen a new game from developers Rare since 2008, which came via the Xbox 360's Nuts and Bolts, but even that proved divisive amongst fans. Deciding to make a spiritual successor, Platonic Games was formed by ex-Rare employees in 2014, and come May 2015, a Kickstarter was launched for Ukulele. Daily. Promising a return to traditional 3D platformer collectathons of the 1990s, it reached over £2 million in funding and released in 2017. It wasn't the controversial mess that the last entry was, but it still launched to mixed reviews, and a lot of criticism was specifically targeted at the game's camera system, which was admittedly later addressed in a patch. It captured the spirit of the classic 3D platformers, but some critics believe this made gameplay feel a bit outdated. Ultimately, though, the game was successful enough for play Tonic Games to develop a spin-off, Ukulele and the Impossible Lair. Released October 2019, it swapped 3D platforming for a 2D side-scroller and released to better critical reception. Given the success of that new entry, we may still see a further 3D adventure yet, and hopefully this one's a bit better. Number 7, Final Fantasy All the Bravest. 
No introduction is needed for Final Fantasy. Now spanning 15 main entries, the iconic series is packed with memorable characters, themes, and gameplay mechanics that help define RPGs in general. And Square Enix themselves are no stranger to the idea of crossovers between different entries and games either. And the likes of World of Final Fantasy, Dissidia, and Theater Rhythm are all good examples of their attempts to keep mutating the Final Fantasy brand. All the Bravest is another crossover title that launched for multiplayer platforms, but with little rhyme or reason, and it quickly became one of the worst games in the entire franchise. Featuring no story mode, little in the way of gameplay depth, and extortionate microtransactions for unlocking beloved characters like Tifa Lockhart, Terra, and even franchise mascots like the Chocobo, it was nothing but pure franchise bait to sucker in longtime fans. It represents the worst aspects of modern gaming, was misguided at best, and a slap in the face for fans at worst. Number 6. Dungeon Keeper 2014. Developed by Bullfrog Productions and produced by EA, Dungeon Keeper proved to be an instant hit back in 1997. Playing as a keeper, you work to protect your treasure, employing a squad of minions to maintain operations whilst fending off invasions from heroes set on stealing your wares and attacking rival Dungeon Keepers. It saw a sequel in 1999, but efforts to make the third game floundered and Bullfrog eventually closed down in 2001. Despite the closure though, EA wanted to retain the license and switched up the gameplay to launch a reboot in 2014. After all, there was still a fondness for the franchise that only solidified as the years went on, and a fan base to be tapped into. Of course, EA recognised that, but didn't think they actually had to do, you know, any work to give them what they wanted. Instead, they made a tower defence game with Dungeon Keeper wallpaper, which came under heavy criticism for its monetization practices, and failed to capture the spirit of the previous titles. Its adverts were also judged to be misleading, and this led to the the British Advertising Standards Authority ruling that EA must add further information within the game about its in-app purchases. Number 5. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 Tony Hawk may have long retired from professional skateboarding, but his legacy holds strong. Working with Activision across a wide range of licensed titles, the Pro Skater series is fondly remembered across the PS1 and PS2 eras for their gameplay, precise controls, and kick-ass soundtracks. Following a series of less successful ventures, such as the abomination that was Ride, though, Activision's license was set to expire in 2015. Looking to squeeze out one more title to stop this from happening, they proceeded to develop Pro Skater 5, returning to the core gameplay not seen since Proving Ground. Development only lasted allegedly several months, whereas most games usually take several years to be made, and naturally this made it release in an unfinished state, with it being fixed via plenty of patches afterwards. Filled with bugs, glitches, and a complete lack of structure, if this had been any other Tony Hawk's game, it would have been bad enough, but the fact that Activision revived the Pro Skater name for this is just unforgivable. Number 4. Warcraft 3 Reforged Blizzard Entertainment is no stranger to controversy in recent times. Once revered amongst its fanbase, they've come under major criticism from fans in the last few years, and Warcraft 3 Reforged might just be the biggest misstep yet. Launched back in 2002 as Warcraft 3 Reigns of Chaos, it was the last traditional Warcraft game before Blizzard moved to World of Warcraft. As you can imagine, its reputation has only grown with time. So when Blizzard confirmed at BlizzCon 2018 that a remastered edition was on its way, expectations were un understandably extremely high. And I think you know where this is going, but upon its release this January, fans were vocally upset. Promising modern HD visuals, remastered maps, and remodeled characters, it soon became clear that this wasn't delivered upon, and even worse, the core systems had been tampered with and updated in game-breaking ways. This was made worse by its price point, the fact that Blizzard merged the PC clients with the original version, and the initial refusal to provide refunds. It's another highly public failure from a company that could once do no wrong, leaving fans worried about what will happen next. Number 3. Shaq Fu A Legend Reborn it's one thing to see publishers try and reboot classic franchises, but Shaq Fu was certainly no classic to begin with. Released in 1994 across the SNES and Mega Drive, it starred Shaquille O'Neal in an otherwise generic 2D fighting game. It released to negative reviews and retrospective opinions have been even less kind, so it's baffling anyone thought a sequel was a good idea. It's kind of a meme at this point, and considering that people still talk about it, I suppose you could see why someone out there might think it was a good idea to bring it back, but 
but I don't know guys, I'm not sold on this one. Either way, this selection of people included the developers at Big D's Productions, who bought into the brand power of Shaq and launched a crowdfunding campaign via Indiegogo in 2014. After little word on its development for several years, it eventually released in 2018 across all major platforms. Changing from a 2D fighting game to a beat-em-up, it was just as badly received as its predecessor and was even given away for free on Switch to early adopters of NBA Playgrounds. Look, we all love a bit of Shaq, but we certainly did not need or love this. Number two, Alone in the Dark Illumination. Before Resident Evil became king of survival horror games, Alone in the Dark set the groundwork. Released in 1992 across the MSDOS, it was gaming's first 3D survival horror and launched a critical acclaim. It spawned several sequels to varying reception, but 2016 saw Atari take a different approach to revive the franchise with Alone in the Dark Illumination. Featuring a cooperative focus and only being playable online, it saw you working with other players to solve mysteries within the horror setting. Releasing only on PC, though, it felt more like a mix of Left 4 Dead and Resident Evil and failed to capture the good qualities of either of these great franchises and thus critics tore it apart. In fairness though, it was a poorly executed concept that failed to achieve its basic goals and buried the franchise once again. Since its release, the series rights have been snapped up by THQ and that leaves the door open for hopefully better future sequels. Number 1. Contra Rogue Core Konami are a shadow of what they used to be. Once a powerful force within the industry, their recent efforts seemed more focused on arcade machines and retro compilations than serious console games. We saw it with the lackluster Metal Gear Survive, the first and so far only entry since Hideo Kojima left the company, and last year it was Contra's turn. First appearing back in 1987, the classic running gun side-scroller series was a staple of the 8 and 16-bit eras, and Contra 3 The Alien Wars was arguably the franchise peak on the SNES. It was disappointing then to see Konami revive the franchise last year as Contra Rogue Corp. Ditching the 2D side-scrolling for a top-down isometric view, it's came under fire for its departure from series conventions, bad visual design, clunky gameplay, and unpolished presentation. If you're desperate for a new Contra fix, you'd be better off sticking to the anniversary collection. If this wasn't called Contra, it would have simply came and went, but the fact is, it wasn't, and Konami needlessly burned yet another bridge with fans. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Do you buy into the promise of these games only to get burned, or do you think that some of them are actually all right? Either way, while you're down there, could you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.